Hi, it's Jan Beta, and this is an Amiga 600 HD that got donated by Katrina. It is not working, it has a black screen, it also has a broken RAM expansion inside that I have to remove to uh, make this work. Yeah, I'm just going to try to figure out the fault and fix it. So let's get right into it and open this up. It also has this switch here, which is a three position switch. Don't know what that is for, probably maybe kickstart, I don't know. Let's just open it up and have a look. I think this should pretty much open like the other Amigos. Yeah, there's three screws here, one screw here, two screws in the back here. One of which probably holds the drive. Okay. I think these are not the original screws. They are black. But we're going to see about that. These use um, standard screws pretty much anyway, so doesn't matter. Warranty seal is broken already. Okay, these are the screws for the drive, I guess. Could probably have left them in or maybe. Okay, there's supposedly a ribbon cable. Yes, there is. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and I can see right away that it hasn't been recapped should do that immediately, more or less. Okay, has the hard disk bracket, which is pretty nice, of course. And it has some sort of kickstart switch, ROM switch, which is what this uh, is for. Okay, pretty nice. Okay, so this is a kickstart switching thing. Which has, I believe it has the original Kickstart 2.0.5 probably. And this looks like a Kickstart 1.3. So you can pr pretty much switch this uh, down to be uh, a Commodore Amiga 500. Very nice. Okay, this has kind of some kind of <laughs> bracket here that we have to remove. So I'm just going to mark where the uh, cables came from. So pin one is marked on the board. Still going to make a little red dot here and a red marking here. So I remember where the drive is connected. Okay, I can pretty much see right away in this area here that there has been capacitor leakage, especially back here. It's difficult to show on camera. But there is some, the uh, solder pads are not shiny, but they are dull. Uh, these look pretty good actually, but yeah, there's probably some stuff going on there that is not good for the system. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should definitely replace those and neutralize uh, the spill there. But it doesn't look as if the circuit board has been damaged or anything like that. Looks pretty good actually. Okay, here's some other capacitors. They look quite, look a bit at an angle and stuff, so they definitely need replacing. These keyboard ribbons are notorious for failing. Uh, you basically pull this up and then it's uh, open. This might have something to do with um, this thing not starting up. Whoa, okay. There's a broken off pin on this thing. Yeah. That should, that should be the whole problem, I guess. Okay, found the pin. It was just lying on the circuit board. Probably I broke it off. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but it might very well be that I broke it. Oh, yeah, sorry. But this thing, I, I guess I'm going to 
put something else in anyway. I mean, it's a neat, it's a neat little circuit board, but uh, would have to build something better, I guess. I think they just put a socket in and just um, clipped it, which makes this really flat, but uh, it doesn't really fit still does it. And I kind of prefer to have precision uh, legs here, so maybe we could do something in that regard. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the RAM expansion that isn't working anyway. Should open the trapdoor thingy here to do that. Got that one out. Might just be a broken RAM chip on there. Might be some damaged traces as well. Okay, we'll see about this one. Seems somebody tried to repair it. Maybe we can fix this. Um, Let me take one second to thank my sponsor for this video, which is PCBWay. If you find yourself on a spot where you want to make your own PCB, like maybe a new uh, RAM expansion for the Amiga 600, then I recommend checking out PCBWay as they offer PCB prototyping and manufacturing for very little money and with very fast turnaround times. And they also have a team of friendly people that are going to guide you through the process in case you need help. So, uh, what I'm going to do is to clean up this area here, which is, uh, I think I can see a trace being eaten away there. And also maybe the other area here, which definitely has some leaky caps. And then I'm going to put a known working kickstart ROM in. I'm not even going to bother uh, getting one of these off here, but I'm using one that I have. Then we should give this a try and see if it actually works, maybe. <laughs> Might work. So here's a Kickstart 1.3 that I burned a while ago. Should go in here like this. And it should start up with a 1.3 Kickstart. Um, you leave the first pins free if you have a uh, 40 pin, pin EEPROM. Uh, these are made to also take 42 pin EEPROMs. Um, yeah, then I'm just going in there with the Q-tip and clean up some of the smudge around the capacitors there and see if that helps. Okay, connected it to a power supply, a known good one, and to the monitor here. Let's see, maybe it does something. Definitely produces some kind of video signal. No, still a black screen, so it wasn't that easy at least. <laughs> but it produces some kind of video output, so um, we get the right frequency. And yeah, that's about it. It has some signs of life, but it doesn't start up. Okay, after running this for a little while, I can smell uh, some fishy stench coming from it. So. Uh, Definitely the capacitors are an issue in this one. I think I want to try to replace this little one here uh, Just to see if that fixes the issues because I have a lot of uh, 10 microfarad capacitors still here Kind of want to try that uh, Yeah, I'm just going to do it the quick and dirty way, just using my regular soldering iron and see if I can get it off. Ok, 
Okay, looks like it's in. Maybe that's all that's there's to it. Yup. <laughs> that looks a lot better already, kids. Yay! <laughs> and it's fixed. <laughs> okay, so it was the one little cap. So that is, that is a classic fault on these, I think. Uh, let me show you in close-up what I did. Okay, some theory about this part of the Amiga circuitry with the 555 timer that actually triggers the reset line timed by this little capacitor charging up. So this charges up, uh, this has an input that if it uh, passes a certain threshold triggers another output that is uh, connected to the reset line. And I am now going to show you exactly what happens on the oscilloscope. If that reset line doesn't get triggered, uh, the system can't start up because the system startup is triggered by the reset line. I'm just scoping the positive terminal of the capacitor. We should see it charging up on the scope, which should take a second or so, which is the time the system uh, pauses before initializing. There we go. And then just discharges again, uh, which is also done through the 555 timer chip. Okay, let me do this again. Switching on. Bam. There we go. Okay, and now I'm scoping uh, pin 3, which should be directly connected to the reset line. And you are going to see that this is uh, getting triggered in the same timing. Okay, turning on. And it goes high, and then it just goes low. And that is the reset. So that is the signal for the system to start up, actually. Let me do this again. Uh, turning on the power. There we go. That's our reset line. So that's how this works. So if this capacitor is faulty, the whole system initialization can't start, so it remains to be a black screen Amiga. So this is a very, very common fault, it seems, from what I've read when I tweeted about this repair. Uh, this little capacitor going bad, usually the smaller capacitances go bad quicker with these capacitors, with all electrolytic capacitors, I believe, and uh, these SMD capacitors from the era are really really prone to failure and leaking. So if you have any devices from the early to mid 90s with um, these SMD electrolytic capacitors on the PCB, you should definitely recap them, uh, which is something I'm going to do to this machine in another video. I'm going to do it as soon as possible because these leak uh, electrolyte on the PCB and the PCB can get damaged, which is also a common fault in this area. I believe that like uh, traces get eaten by the leakage from the capacitors, so the 555 timer doesn't have all the connections it needs and prevents the system from initializing. So that's a very common fault on the Amiga 600 which is easily fixed by replacing this capacitor. You should definitely replace all electrolytic capacitors in these machines as soon as possible. Yeah, so uh, I think that's it for now. I have a working Amiga 600. There is definitely going to be a recap video, uh, like a, an SMD recapping video. I need to fix the kickstart switcher and I'm uh, going to refurb the case a bit, just clean it up a bit. Maybe fix the RAM expansion, which would be very handy. Add a CF card to this. Um, yeah, but that's going to be another video, I think. So this is the black screen Amiga 600 fixed. Easy as that. 
still smells a bit fishy, so I need to replace the other caps for sure. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for your thumbs and your subscriptions. And especially thanks to everyone who supported this channel or continues to support me. And hope you found this informative. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.